Welcome to the Morrison and Mary Wiley Library Summer Reading Program. On Wednesdays, we're going to share some fun books with you. Uh, today, we're going to introduce our theme for the summer, which is Dig Deeper, Read, Investigate, Discover. So we're going to dig deeper by sharing this book, When Sue Found Sue. Sue Hendrickson discovers her T-Rex. So hang on, and we'll get started. The book is by Tony Buzio, illustrated by Diana Suica. Never lose your curiosity about everything in the universe. It can take you to places you never thought possible. Sue Hendrickson was born to find things. Missing trinkets, prehistoric butterflies, sunken ships, even buried dinosaurs. If it was lost, Sue's curiosity led her on a hunt to find it. Sue began searching for lost treasure where she was mighty small. She was born shy and incredibly smart. Treasure hunting was the perfect job for a shy girl. When she was young, Sue would walk alone through the alley behind her home in Munster, Indiana, with her head down. She was on a mission to find things, and she often did, like the little brass perfume bottle she'd never lost. Sue wasn't like the other kids, so shy and smart. Sue gobbled up books the way other kids gobbled up ginger snaps. Head down a book a day, Sue learned things all on her own. She dialed her curiosity up to high and discovered everything about anything that interested her. Sue's curiosity led her to visit the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago. She loved to view the endless supply of treasures that other hunters, maybe us shy outsiders like herself, had already found. Sue couldn't wait to grow up and search the wide world for hidden treasure on her own. At the age of 17, Sue launched her life of discovery, traveling, living outdoors, supporting herself, and finding things. One curiosity always led to another, and for the first time, Sue joined teams, teams of curious, dedicated treasure hunters. Diving first for tropical fish and then for lost boats, lost airplanes, and even lost cars eventually led Sue to search Dominican amber mines for extinct prehistoric butterflies, to search the deserts of Peru for prehistoric whale fossils, and finally, finally, to search the hills of western South Dakota for dinosaur fossils. For four long, hot, dusty summers, Sue dug for duck-billed dino fossils, taking down the big rocks with a shovel and pick, then freeing the bones, first with a rock hammer, then with a digging knife, then with an exacto knife and a tiny pick, and finally dusting the area with a paintbrush to remove all traces of rock from the bones. No shower for washing, no beds for sleeping, no escape from the beating sun. But still, Sue was part of a team. She loved the work, the discovery, and the chance to be curious and find things. During the last weeks of her fourth summer of digging for duckbills in the blistering heat, Sue Hendrickson felt pulled to a sandstone cliff far off in the distance. She couldn't say why then, and she can't say why even now. But she was called to that cliff, and on August the 12th, 1990, when her team headed into town to fix a flat tire, Sue finally followed her curiosity. She and her golden retriever, Gypsy, left home alone that morning in a dense, misty fog, so unusual in the hot, dry plains. They hiked for four hours across seven miles of rugged prairie land before they finally reached the rock face Sue had been so curious about. Sue and Gypsy stood below the 60-foot high towering cliff of tan and gray rock. I walked around the base of that cliff with my head down, watching the ground. About halfway along, I noticed a few pieces of what looked like bones. Then I looked up. Sue stared up at three enormous backbones protruding from the cliff eight feet above her. She felt a thrill run through her. Could it be? It was hard to believe, but Sue knew by their incredible size what those fossils must be. A Tyrannosaurus Rex! I could see 
know quite clearly in the sunlight as though waiting patiently for someone to find them. Once again, Sue Hendrickson did what a shy outsider girl had trained herself to do so well. She found them. Sue rushed back to the campsite, humming with the excitement, the happiness, and the thrill of her find. She couldn't wait to tell the others, a Tyrannosaurus Rex! Her team immediately named the dinosaur Sue the T-Rex after Sue Hendrickson the finder. Then they raced to free the T-Rex from her cliff. But releasing 300 T-Rex bones in 115 degree heat under the sweltering sun without damaging the bones was neither quick nor easy. For five days, Sue and her team worked from sunrise to sunset, breaking rocks with picks and digging with shovels to remove nearly 30 feet of sandstone and hard soil. At last, the bones appeared, so many of them. The team mapped the location of each with drawings and photographs. Finally, with knives, brushes, and smaller tools, Sue and her team removed and numbered every bone, recording them to a notebook. Nearly three weeks later, trucks bounced over 150 miles to deliver all of those bones to the Black Hills Institute. Sue the T-Rex was finally free, thanks to Sue Hendrickson, who was born to find things. After a long dispute about ownership, Sue the T-Rex went to auction. And who won the auction? None other than the Field Museum, that very same museum Sue Hendrickson loved to visit so often as a young girl. Walk into the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago. Inside, Sue the T-Rex towers over you. She is the most, world's largest, most complete, best preserved Tyrannosaurus Rex fossil discovered so far. And she was found by Sue Hendrickson, that once shy girl so different from the others, whose curiosity has always led her to find things. And always What is it about dinosaurs that triggers our imagination? Lots of different people have taken stories of dinosaurs in lots of different directions. Well, here's a story about dinosaurs by Jane, jo Jane Yolen and Mark Teague. How do dinosaurs learn to read? You might learn something about dinosaurs by seeing this story. How does a dinosaur learn how to read? Does he skim through the pages with powerful speed? Does he use his new book as a shovel or bat? Play fetch with the dog, throw books at a cat. Does he sound out the words or just take a quick look? Does she lose her huge temper and then jump on the book? Does she flip every page but not really look through it? Does she skip the hard words? Does the dinosaur chew it? Does he read in the tub, make the book a big boat, and then throw a tantrum when it doesn't float? Does he read on the potty while making a mess? Does he stay till the end of the book? Well, I guess. Does she scratch off the words with the tip of her tail? Does he have a big hissy when reading skills fail? Does the dinosaur wail? No, she's kind in each book to the cover and pages. She reads very carefully, never has rages. She reads out each word till she knows they sound right. When she snuggles in bed, mama turns down the light. Then he calls to his parents who stand by the door, please mama, please papa. Can I read one more? Tomorrow, tomorrow, little dinosaur.